maybe you should talk to Andrew Henderson again. People yeah. are loving it. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Crypto Tips. Live. My name is Toby, and this is Heidi. That's my name. And we are about to explode <laughs> upwards in this space. It's going to be a crazy, crazy month, year, whatever. It's going to be nuts. Yeah. But first. What? What's the news? Hey, everyone. Actually, in the live chat. Let, let's, let's say hi to everybody. What's HR up, guys? 777. One bridge. Are you Who bought to- the dip? Who bought the us, dip? Us. We Who? bought it. We actually tweeted a couple times, or Heidi tweeted a couple times. Pretty much called the bottom on each time. Pretty who, close. Who learned a lesson and, <laughs> and you know, sold? You know, that was a, that was a lesson for sure, I hope. Uh, so what? are you going to talk to Andrew Henderson again anytime soon? I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. Thanks. We'll have to reach out to him. Yep. Yeah. He's, there's a lot of people interested in moving. That's true. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, Sergio, no, we're not going to keep it at 6 p.m. It's just we had a special occasion stuff. today. It's a, yeah, special occasion. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. But it's great to see you guys yeah, here. Good to see you guys. We got a bunch of viewers in, Amen. which is great. Nick, great James, to see you. Dan, Trader Zen. Carlos, Stevie. What's up, Nick? Dan Cryptid. Bought What's that up, Rob? dip. Good job, Dan. Textonic, blood, Bloody Clashers. Oh, yeah. That, Heidi loved that game. Yeah. The, the Clash of Clans. Oh, the Clash of Clans. I it. rock that. <laughs> my Emmerich, my name up? there was Anarchist with a K-I-S-S-E-D. I thought it was really clever. Uh, anyway. Carlos M. M- Matos? No, I'm kidding, man. I'm just messing with you. Mickey, good to see you, buddy. Josh right. Atkinson. Okay. Let's get into uh, it. Yeah, let's get into today. I, I want to talk about really uh, the trend that I hope to see continue uh in this year 2021 for those of you who uh have subscribed to my newsletter and you read what i published yesterday for those of you who haven't joined yet it's free there's a link to sign up for it down below in the video description i encourage you to check that out Mm -hmm. i spoke about uh you know this unfortunate trend that we're seeing and as always there's this side of it and there's that side of it so uh, pretty much the compliance side and the decentralized crypto kind of response or defense to that so uh, we've seen this with Dash uh, uh, this past year, and I think even the year before that, where they were seeing a lot of delistings uh, for that coin on centralized exchanges because you know they're kind of known as a privacy coin. Um, and also, similarly with PIVX now, they've come up with this new release that allows them to attach encrypted, which is great. I hope that it's very securely encrypted, uh, personally identifiable information onto their, like they're calling it their shield transactions, like their private transactions. It's interesting. Um, Obviously they're doing this, uh, they're marketing it as a way to keep them uh, very compliant, far more compliant than Bitcoin even. Um, And they're obviously needing to do this. They're not doing this for the good of their users because first of all, even though they've encrypted that information that's attached to the transactions, they obviously need to do that because some centralized entity needs to collect that information and view that information. And who knows uh, who's gonna be storing that information, how long they're gonna be storing it for, and how they're gonna be storing it in a secure manner or not. Let's hope it's as secure as can be, but let's be honest, it's the government and they're not always the most efficient at things like this. Never, um, never efficient. There's an argument there for that, for sure. <laughs> but so that's that's kind of like the, the two sides of the coin that we're seeing are these uh, centralized exchanges are obviously centralized and therefore they are a bottleneck that can get squeezed and manipulated uh, to force really to comply to these governmental regulations because uh, they're centralized. Uh, there's no, they don't have any decentralized strength in that. Um, it's really easy for them to pinpoint a person to put some pressure on to threaten with, you know, fines or with jail time, what have you. Um, and we're seeing that's like a uh, stage one and then the trickle down effect are these coins that are reliant on centralized exchanges for listing their coins like again i saw with dash now pivx um they're really trying to market themselves as a facta travel rule compliant coin because of this new implementation um and that's that's because there's really not a lot of decentralized exchanges that work 
with uh, different blockchains. There's BlockNet, but honestly, it's not nearly as user friendly as something like Uniswap or OneInch or Kyber, you know, like those that are really focused or solely used for Ethereum and Ethereum tokens. Um, so it's interesting seeing that there's all these Ethereum tokens that are really uh, taking advantage of it and uh, benefiting from being able to be listed on a decentralized exchange uh, in a very free way. Whereas there's these other coins that are depending on centralized exchanges to get exposure to new users, people to hold and use that coin. Um, and what, so that's an issue, right? And here is a response that I am actually really excited and it's something I'm always talking about. Like whenever someone asks me, uh, what's your favorite cryptocurrency? Like the top three things I'm talking about is privacy uh, and and blockchain interoperability. Any pl any platform that is facilitating that interoperability um, and re really playing to each other's strengths and working together rather than acting like crypto is some zero sum game, uh, it's really going to benefit and and a lot of people. So like you know, there's all these Ethereum killers, and now you're seeing. <clears throat> that pivot towards these second layer solutions or, you know, they're trying to lend themselves to then uh, supplement the Ethereum blockchain. So an example of this is SushiSwap reveals ambitious 2021 roadmap. Uh, there's, a, you know, a few things listed here, but the one that I'm obviously most excited for and hope hoping that they actually pull through um, and do this in a proper way is their plans for a cross chain DEX. So for those of you who love, who want to use decentralized exchanges, but maybe the coin you want to trade isn't an Ethereum token or is an Ethereum, this could be a solution for you. And I think that they're going to get a lot of attention from this and hopefully it's going to spur uh, more development in this area. Yeah, it's going to really hurt centralized exchanges too if they don't hop on this. Yeah, I mean, can <laughs> you imagine? Governments are going to freak out. That's really the Oof. only... Uh, the thing that centralized exchanges have that keep them relevant is their ability to offer a, a fiat on ramp for people uh, and also uh, the ability to list a great number of different types of cryptocurrencies. Also, we saw this announcement with Shapeshift, how they're developing a DEX without KYC. thought that was great. And then duh, it's only for Ethereum and Ethereum tokens again. So it's like they're just adding to that competition for the Ethereum DEXs. Um, so it's really interesting what SushiSwap is doing. They're stepping out of that and really offering, I think, a, a really helpful tool that that a lot of people are going to benefit from. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and then up here it says, Yeah. I mean, this is kind of like... We're going to cover off, that, off, but yeah. Off, oh, okay, we'll cover that. We'll, <laughs> so he's getting just, excited I'm about getting stimulus. excited on that one. This is great. I mean, something <laughs> so bullish of Bitcoin, it's unbelievable. Oh, Bitcoin, big... honey... <laughs> Badger and pivotal point. Thank you. Two yeah, words, thank you dry for the powder. super chat, guys. Yeah, we had a bit of dry dry powder today, and we yeah. ended up buying Ethereum or Bitcoin at thirty one eight hundred and ETH at nine hundred and thirty. Yeah. Um. So that was great. You know. Um. We it was so fast that exactly. I mean, we barely got it, and I'm like, and that's the thing. The I'll dips. I think. I really think. Obviously, dips are still going to happen, and that is a good, healthy thing for a good, healthy correction to keep things in check. And, you know, it doesn't do a blow off top too soon. But also, these dips don't last very long. It lasted how many hours? Like, it didn't even last a full day. Uh, so, yeah. And Bitcoin Honey Badger, thank you so much. Yeah. We really appreciate and it. And Bit, Bitskin, Bitskin, thank you, thank you buddy. for the super chat. You Thanks guys as always. Great. Sorry for the fiat trash donation. Please convert to crypto. <laughs> Don't worry, ASAP. we'll put it to good use. We are definitely going to put it to good, to good <laughs> use, guys. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is going to be great. So what are, the, of that, what are the chances Bitcoin will ever see two or 20,000 20, again? <laughs> 200, that's 20, probably yeah, yeah, less yeah. likely. Yeah, no. Would uh, you buy it if it went to 200? 200k? No, $200. Oh, gosh. That'd be <laughs> you buy so many Bitcoin. Amazing, but it's never going to do that. Yeah. Our chances are gone on that. Yeah. 20,000, probably not going to happen. Anyway, so, uh, you know, between this article is saying between technical analysis, analysts and on chain analysts, everyone's uh, saying that further price discovery beyond $41,000 per Bitcoin is. Uh, is definitely happening, especially if, uh, let's see here at the very bottom, it says, 
Something about 24,000. Like 24,000 is a really, I guess, strong point. <laughs> so if it doesn't, if it doesn't go below 24,000, they're saying that there's plenty of price or, uh, price discovery to happen above the current all-time high, which is $41,000. Sure, but I mean- Well, we already know that. There's plenty of price discovery still to come yeah exactly like, just, no there's whatever. they're saying if it doesn't they're saying if it doesn't go below twenty four thousand, that it, there's so much more to go above forty one thousand. that's what they're saying pretty whatever much. guys like it has so much to go up can right you now, imagine if this is what you relied on no, this kind of information I, to to see what your investment is doing if you didn't know anything if you were like a noob and you just got into this space you, you would just sell you know what i mean like you would really sell and that would suck yeah. Imagine selling like, yeah. oh my gosh, I got to sell because I'm listening to Coindesk or, or whatever, yeah. it's articles, and they're or not CNBC actually... like going, oh my gosh, we uh, Bitcoiners can lose everything. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> Obviously, like, you know, you know, people can lose everything with what they are doing with uh, so, yeah. inflation. Yeah. Have they talked about that? The debt bubble, whatever. So. No, exactly. So. Yeah, uh, that's why it's far more uh, satisfying and useful to pay attention, much more attention to actually what this technology is used for and the importance lying in that rather than some number that's attached to, you know, it on a market. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> although it is fun to see it go up, like, who, it, you know, who doesn't enjoy that? But there's a much bigger picture <laughs> happening that, that here. little point says, epic dip coming. I hope so. I yeah. really hope so. Like this would be great, really, really good and healthy for the market. Like thirty yeah. percent dips from forty two thousand is, you know, it's it's twenty seven or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So you know, that's normal, guys. Like this, we had like five of those dips, thirty to forty percent, back in two thousand seventeen. You know, so and it was normal, and then right away, boom, it went up, and that was just retail. Now we yeah. have, so that's it's going to be. Difficult for them to push it that hard, but who knows if it's a coordinated effort, then sweet. They could just do a bunch of stink bids and like, yeah, whatever or um, what do you call it? Um, uh, fake fake, fake bids. Fake, yeah. yeah, they can just fake the market out. Bruce Morton is asking, will retail buy Bitcoin over 40,000, 50,000, 60,000? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're going to be the ones buying that. If they get there that early. I mean, there is retail right now, but I mean, if you look at like the Google Trends charts or whatever, I mean, it's going up a little bit. Um, so there is retail, but as far as you guys like- are cracking me up in the chat. I think people are going to be like buying like crazy, especially well, during the Well, because you're always saying top. retail is like dumb money. It is. And so they're going to be getting at the very end when yeah. every mainstream outlet is talking about it every single day. And that's all they talk about. That's when you get out. Because that's the mainstream media is fueling the dumb money with this FOMO yes. like crazy. They're the ones lining them up for essentially slaughter. for the slaughter. Yeah. They don't care about you. They want to use you as a tool to prop up their investment. And if you don't believe me on that, just remember when Kramer came out, I think yeah. it was in back in 2007. 2007, and he said, or six or seven, he said, uh, Bears or Bears or Lehman Brothers is a buy. Buy it right now. And yeah. guess what happened? Like a day later, pretty much went to zero. Yeah. Or pretty close to that. So, yeah, these guys are scumbags. They front run everybody, and they're just not even worth listening to. So, don't get, okay. just ignore me. Uh, Zotrack, he said, In a year, I've lost almost everything except my crypto. Yeah. And that is it. That's exactly what this is all about. That's why it's so much more important than the price movements. It's something that you can actually physically own if you are, you know, storing it in a wallet that you control and it can't be taken away from you unless you let it be taken away from you because, you know, whatever, like you've decided that. Um, yeah. So I'm really glad that you got into crypto because I'm glad you have that. I think that's going to be uh, very helpful for you in the future. For sure. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> dumb retail money is free government money that's true <laughs> yeah i mean the, the... oh also sorry patrick pellegrino you cracked me up dip of epic proportion let the bitcoin hit the floor let the bitcoin hit the floor yeah that's <laughs> i'm not gonna it. sing for you guys but <laughs> let the bitcoin hit the floor <laughs> Okay, I got a little crazy with that one, sorry. Um, yeah. So talk, speaking again, going back a little bit to that blockchain interoperability, one of these platforms that is 
you know, certainly setting itself up for that completely revolving around that it. is Polka Dot. They're going to kill it. Um, that's who Sushi Swap is going to be yes. partnering with. Um, so I think it's one to look out for. The only yeah. thing I don't like about Polka Dot, guys, is that it's pretty much delegated proof of stake. It's nominated proof of stake. Pretty much the same thing. I'll be be really... I need to do uh, definitely more in, uh, uh, research on any kind of safeguards that they have against the kind of manipulation that often comes from these nominated or voted in positions. De delegated collusion. proof of stake is, is buggy. I know people hate me for saying that. No, but it's it, it's, it's, uh, it puts a limit to the, the level of decentralization the network can become. And when you put people in power... They tend to like that, and you know they they become corrupted, and we've seen that already. Uh, Steam it with Tron, yeah. and also there is some evidence of that with EOS. I think that EOS addressed it, but still it happened. So I'm really I need to do some for those of you in the Patreon. Uh, keep an eye out for a deep dive on Polkadot that's coming out. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, what's also kind of interesting is that they're going to be rebranding a little bit, revamping their platform. And for those of you who have ever used their Polkadot.js uh, wallet, uh, you're probably hoping that that's going to be updated as well. Uh, not the most user friendly, but anyway. Uh, so they're pretty much going to be crowdfunding uh, this new design. And, you know, much like their their network is designed, uh, their community is going to be voting people in that will be making the decisions of the design. Uh, but so anyway, it's interesting that they're getting some input, direct input from the <coughs> community. Yep. But, so we'll see what Polkadot turns into. Um, next, let's talk about Bitcoin mining. This is so bullish, guys, right here. It's just ridiculous. <clears throat> Go for it. Okay, so Bitcoin mining difficulty, it really uh, is pretty much a one-to-one uh, direct ratio to how secure the network is. It's how much computing power you need to be able to mine a block. Therefore, how much computing power you need to manipulate the blockchain. The higher the difficulty, the more difficult and expensive it is to do that and to maintain that manipulation. Pretty much it's impossible for anyone. It's been like that for a few years, but even more so now. But what's crazy is these mining companies, There's uh, this is the the... There's never been more uh, big operation type mining companies as there are now. And these guys are loving the profits that they're seeing from this huge increase in price from Bitcoin. They're investing in more, uh, infrastructure. more infrastructure, more computers. Um, and actually they have uh, Bitmain is sold out until August. So bullish, bullish, bullish. Pretty freaking bullish. And uh, add on to that the fact that what we went on before when we were talking um, what was it, like a month or two ago, talking about uh, uh, Plan B's theory for, what is it, the stock-to-flow ratio? Yeah. Uh, a, major a major part of that is the sell pressure that miners can put on the, uh, the, the market for selling Bitcoin, the sell pressure that they can put on it. But miners are getting less and less Bitcoin, and that means less and less sell pressure. Uh, so, you know, even though they're being really profitable, it doesn't mean that it's going to be terrible. Oh, here we go. So um, the, the miners, you know, they're, they are selling to... Yeah, these are the guys. Actually, the that's probably people. where all this uh, profit is coming yeah. from because these, these huge corporations are paying the 350% premium on virgin Bitcoin. That's Bitcoin that has zero transaction history. Like there's no chance of it having been attached to any nefarious activities. Uh, that's actually <laughs> a great point. Yeah. So it's not even entering the market. It's no, not even it's not doing even entering the market. So a lot, literally like this yeah. sell off right here was people that are just weekended, maybe uh, retail that had just gotten in. <clears throat> I mean, imagine if, if you were retail right now and, and, and you saw you bought around $40,000. And then you saw it drop to 30. You'd freak out, you know, like I don't blame them because they don't, it may, might not understand this space and they sell and, and one cell leads to another and they, some of them are probably margined and leveraged. And, you know, that's what happens. You have a cascading effect of leverage, like just boom, 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 boom. You know, just people just losing all their money yeah. pretty much margin calls. Yeah. Like, and especially when it's dropping that fast, like, I mean, they're they're done so yeah it's it's um pretty amazing like they're just sucking it off so i think like a lot of the um a lot of the bitcoin are yeah. are going to be gone forever <laughs> yeah sorry 
Satoshi would be proud of all, all these people. <laughs> they would. <laughs> are, are you two the younger Max and Stacy? Well, no, this is Toby and I'm Heidi. <laughs> truthfully, like we we actually... Oh, we look up to we them for about, sure. We uh, talked about them, you know. Um, uh, we, we reached out to them a couple times. They're, yeah, they're busy. They're pretty busy. They're on their bus. But I um, yeah, I think um, that would be a lot of fun. So they seem to get along. We're a little bit different. Um, I think I'm a little more extreme in some areas than Max, and then Max is more extreme about certain areas than me. So I think it's kind of cool, you know. I, yeah. I like him. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's talk about malware, guys. Malware, malware, whatever. Uh, there is a new warning you guys should be aware of. You know all these scammers that are always in the comments? There's impersonators of me on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, here on YouTube, uh, and they're usually trying to promote some kind of a magical trading software, uh, an application you can download maybe, don't do it. Just don't do it. Uh, it doesn't exist, it's a scam, and they're gonna take your crypto, and if not directly, by having you send them money or send them crypto, they're going to steal it from you because there's this new malware that targets Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, uh, and pretty much they get people to, um, here, let me, let me, the paper described it as a composition of a full-fledged marketing campaign, custom cryptocurrency-related applications, and new remote access tool written from scratch. Uh, they, it's common, while it's common for such information stealers to try and collect private keys to access victims' wallets, this Electro Rat had a few fundamental differences. The latest malicious operation was reportedly built from scratch in a way to target multiple operating systems at once. Um, it's typically promoted as a very successful trading instrument or a tool for multiple exchange transactions on one interface. If this sounds at all familiar about anything, like you thought you're talking to the real YouTuber uh, crypto personality that, uh, and you weren't, and you were directed towards something like this, an application that you download on your computer, you, uh, it's probably corrupted. Um, there's, yeah, like they said, they, they even, uh, hired, uh, some, let me see. It said like they hired some, uh, uh, this... cryptocurrency, uh, personality, you know, to advertise for them. And that's another thing, like people get so greedy. They're going to accept money to talk about whatever they can for that money. Um, and it's something that I don't do. I will never do a paid promotion or sponsorship like the most i would do for a sponsorship is something like apparel like like i am i really shy away from talking about anyone's favorite cryptocurrency or whatever because it's not what it's about uh that's a really easy way to lose lose a lot of reputation points in my opinion so uh yeah watch out for people who sell out because you don't know what they're selling you um they probably don't know what they're selling you either um anyway do you have anything to say about that I mean, this is just, this is really bullish as well, <laughs> because this is what we saw back in 2017 and, and it started back late 2016 and then through 17 and, and yeah, the, the scammers just were crazy. Like they just, they came up with so many interesting ways to take people's money. Okay. It was just nuts. And so this time around, I mean, considering that retail is probably going to be ending up getting in. A lot later, which means they're gonna be so desperate. Which means they're probably gonna spend a little more money because I think that it's gonna be like all they have, and so that's if so scammers sad. can get a hold of that, that's so then sad. that's the honey. That's that's the the, the honey pot. The honey pot, you know. So um, yeah, it's really unfortunate, and so that's why people like me and Heidi and other people are just like we're, we keep people informed, you know, and we're trying to stay on top of you know scammers that are on Heidi's channel but there's so many of them so like annoying. we get we get bombarded with them like every day like okay we uh, I found this guy I found this one I found this one blockchain check one two three or whatever like that it's just like it's really hard to keep track of them and then Twitter can only do so much because they won't give us a verification and so we're trying to get verified like uh, like an Instagram verification you know just to keep people from getting scammed because Instagram is a place where you know, you can easily get scammed. Like these yeah. people are really noobs because they're not, they don't understand like, oh, there's Twitter, you know, like, well, yeah. 
So. so just for reference, if you guys, like I'm never going to guarantee profits or anything. The only thing that I have to promote is this channel, our Twitter accounts, uh, which you can find links to all that stuff down below in the video description, as well as my Patreon, which I offer classes. It's all about education and trying to help people navigate this crypto space uh, as and our trades or whatever yeah and our trade like yeah we we provide a lot but that's the only thing i will ever talk about i'll never talk about some whatsapp guy i don't have a i don't have a manager um anyway and, 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 and our trades <laughs> wait, wait. are not sponsored by the way they're not no like, i no we but find it's what them we're... together and then we okay go for it. uh summer lily mm -hmm. thank you for this edition um just so you know these this malware that i'm talking about three apps that have this malware are jam with two m's e-trade and Dow Poker. So if you guys have downloaded anything like that, uh, check out your computer and and lock it down. You know, John, a Josh, ask Actinson, uh, how are you coming along with your book? Did you buckle down and finish it? I don't know, Heidi. What do you Not think? Not yet. You guys, I keep editing it as I'm writing it, and it just keeps. It's just a never-ending project. I'm gonna bugger. Thank you for reminding her. I'm trying to decide. Okay, here. I guess I'm gonna ask now. Should it? Do you guys opinion? Should it be like a long book or like many little short books? Because I feel like it could go in a whole bunch of different directions. I have a lot of content. It's just and and Heidi's been it. writing this for about three years okay. now. So. That's sad. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> no, but it's a lot of it's a lot of good stuff through three years. You know. Um, so. Promethea was asking, why did we choose Portugal? We chose Portugal because of the surf, because of the quality of life. The cost of living is pretty. Uh, pretty it's doable crypto tax free we and found out about that afterwards. we didn't find out about that yeah. until after we chose to live here like they didn't make that announcement until 2017 so that was a happy announcement for us to have but it actually didn't play into it um if it if it went the other way and it wasn't very tax crypto tax friendly how would you still be here um yeah because i mean we have if you're flexible if you understand tax laws we could literally we're saying kid citizens so we renounce our u.s citizenship uh, through our profits of the bull run of 2016-17. And then we um, got St. Kitts and Nevis uh, citizenships and for both of us. And we that that's how we uh, were able to live a tax-free life, regardless of what Portugal does. So if they do decide to tax us here, we're just going to be like, well, screw you. We're just going to have the bank account in St. Kitts and funnel it through that. So, you know, governments are going to win. Sip, plain and simple. So it's it's nice that they have allowed this so far, but I'm not going to give in if they decide to tax us. Like they're not going to tax us. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for all your uh, input about the book. Everyone wants to have a series. There's one person that's one long book, but uh, cool. That's actually uh, better for me to wrap my head around. Bob, we are not thank Portuguese you, citizens. Thank you for the input, you guys. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. We're we're getting there. Let's get let's get Toby. Okay. So get Biden. Toby okay. Up, Biden just we? said three let's... trillion dollar stimulus. Like, come on, three trillion. That's three thousand. He could do more. Billion. He should do more. That's so much money, guys. <laughs> that I mean, currency. That's just backed by nothing that they're gonna throw out in the market. Do you know how bullish that is? And you know. It's not just like you who might go, okay, I want to go ahead and buy a crypto because I see these people at the Fed just completely out of control. That's out of control, guys. Three trillion for stimulus is out of control, especially when they're not producing anything. The, the economy's shut. So, and you have 70 plus million people unemployed. Um, and it's not just regular people like us. It's also institutions that see that and go, Oh my gosh, like mm -hmm. we need to get out of the US dollar. And so, yeah, I mean, it, that's a red flag. It's a huge red flag. You know, it's not it's not just presidents, you know, Trump, you know, he yes, he raised it. Uh, he put the whatever under him. Uh, the Federal Reserve printed more currency in the last two than the last 200 years, pretty much. Yeah. And so under, you know, Biden, the mm -hmm. Fed is going to probably do way more than that. So. Yeah, this is crazy. Um, if this you, is, yeah, th th this is so bullish. So when you see dips like today, you just laugh at it. Literally, just laugh at it. It's useless to 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 be scared of it. I mean, you know that people are are buying up like like nothing. I mean, just look how fast it goes up and down. That just shows that people are buying up super fast. And uh, yeah, it's really exciting. I'm. It's gonna hurt a lot of people. 
And the people that aren't in crypto are the ones that are going to get hurt the most. You know, if they're in stocks, you know, that's third party. Uh, I mean, that's um, that can be really dangerous as well. You don't know what the stock market is to do. It's not going to be a safe haven asset, you know. Crypto is. That's the only safe haven asset right now because yeah. even gold and silver, they're manipulated by, by JP Morgan and, and Goldman Sachs and Wells Fargo, Citigroup, you name it. So, yeah, just be really careful. I mean, hopefully soon enough, people are going to realize why crypto is a safe haven. And then maybe one day everyone will magically wake up and realize, wow, can you can you why do you remember back in the day when we used to trust these crazy governments and centralized entities with all that power? Why would we have ever done that? Yeah. That would be a beautiful day. Uh, OK. <clears throat> Uh, Summer Lily said, can he give us French some stimulus also since his debt is going to have consequences Oh, you're going to have that too. too because it's going to be race to the bottom. So the ECB is definitely going to print a ton, a ton this year. So yeah, just wait. Josh Atkinson. Yes, I'm definitely going to do an audiobook as well. Uh, he said, I'll read it for you if you need a Southern accent version. <laughs> definitely. Thanks. <laughs> um, also, uh, I just think Biden might be slightly oh, he's bullish the best on Bitcoin, ever. or he doesn't realize how what he's doing is so <laughs> bullish for Bitcoin. Uh, it's you know that that everyone was worried about FinCEN and this midnight rulemaking they were doing to create all this regulation for centralized exchanges to require people to prove the identity of the owners of the wallets that they would be withdrawing out of the exchange. Uh, they were trying to do that again. It's called midnight rulemaking at the last moment, not really get people a chance to vote or be educated on the topic. Apparently, uh, Biden on you know his inauguration day is going to set a freeze on all this kind of midnight rulemaking. Whether or not you know he reviews it and approves it is a different story. But at least it's going to be frozen for a little bit. So I mean, he must own some Bitcoin or something. Maybe. I don't know. Or he doesn't want to have to go through the hassle of having to try to identify a wallet. How do you do that? You can't, How can you identify that you own a wallet when you don't need your identity to own a wallet? I mean, that is good news for, for citizens they of the They don't freaking understand crypto. It's so aggravating. Right. Anyway, yeah. The um, yes, I will be both stones. I will be doing a BISC tutorial coming up in the next couple of weeks. I've already had some scheduled in, uh, but uh, that is definitely high on my list. Mark Goodman, uh, Toby, do you still own your gold? Um, actually, I sold all of my silver yeah. uh, back silver, in yeah. uh, before the explosion upwards. So I put it into ETH and uh, I think ETH. It's in. It's on the Patreon. I, I made yeah. a. I made a. Um, a post on that. So, uh, Bitcoin Honey Badger asks, if the dollar crashes, what will happen to the value of cryptos as they are pegged to the dollar? Well, I think it's going to be pegged to something else. Yeah, it'll be. Maybe we'll CBDCs. only think in terms of, oh, OK, maybe central bank digital yes. currencies or even better is if people start thinking in terms of Bitcoin rather than in terms of the dollar. There's a lot of people Bitcoin that love and, and trust be government, the though. Standard. Yeah, but there's gonna be a split world between people that own a real asset and a fake asset, such as a central bank dig digital currency. Yeah. Um. Anyway, thank you everyone. That that's we're at 33 minutes. Thank you everyone for taking part in today's live stream. Always enjoying our time spent with you guys in the well, live let's chat. End it, let's end it with what? MicroStrategy. Oh, okay. Come on. What do you want to okay. Say? So, so MicroStrategy is CEO. Bitcoin is like YouTube, except for money instead of videos. Huh? I think he must be high when he said that. Because, I mean... Bitcoin doesn't censor me. Yeah. It doesn't um, <laughs> boot you off the network. Boot, yeah, like what? It's not it owned mute by your Google. Yeah. Um, it doesn't farm your data. Yeah, th not quite, buddy. But I, I like Michael Saylor. He's a Bitcoin just maniac. But it's, this uh, tells you right here he doesn't understand why, yeah, yeah. completely. So this is why we tell people, hey, if if you're going to be following people, follow people that have been in full. Like three full bull runs and bear markets, all right? Like that's it. Like mm. because you're going to need that time to understand where the markets are headed. It took me a little it, I'm constantly learning why Bitcoin is so important. You don't learn that in like a year or whatever. Like you just no. don't. So you have to understand this year it's after a slow year after marinating year. marinating process. It really is. <laughs> like no matter how much you study it or whatever, you learn about it every single day. And uh, especially us, we study this 
Like I'm I'm staring at like articles all freaking day. Like I, I'm addicted to this stuff. So yeah. um, and I've been doing it for seven years now. So yeah, like just you know when, when you hear things like that, you know that he's not quite there yet. But he is so bullish. He's and waking he's got, up to it. He's it's, got a it's lot of cute. No, no, no. He's got a lot of good things to say. But it's cute. He's, he's, getting he's still getting there. Yes. And so so are we. You know what I mean? We're not perfect. <laughs> no. But. Yeah. It's funny to watch people's evolution into this, which is cool. Anyways. Thank you, everyone, again, for participating in this live stream. Yeah, thanks, We'll guys. be back again. I uh, got some tax videos coming out and another tutorial coming out this week, so don't miss that on this channel. If you're new, hey, welcome. I'm glad you guys found us. And don't forget to hit subscribe, subscribe with the bell notification so you yes. can get notified when we do these live videos. Typically, it's every Monday at noon Eastern time we're here going live. Don't miss it. We'll see you again uh, soon. <laughs> bye. Have a good one. See you guys. Say bye. <laughs>